Have you ever cruised down the overseas highway, windows down, belting out Jimmy Buffett as you head towards Key West? Maybe you're a landlocked Midwesterner dreaming of palm trees, pina coladas, and white sandy beaches. Have you ever dreamed of that perfect Caribbean vacation with crystal clear water and the faint hum of steel drums infused in the night air? Rather than wait for summer vacation, I've got the perfect build to bring island life into your home. Introducing the Caribbean Garden Tank. 14 gallons stuffed with macroalgae, gorgonians, sponges, mangroves, scallops, mollies, pipefish, cucumbers, and a whole lot more. Don't go anywhere. I'm about to teach you how to build one for yourself. A Caribbean or Caribbean garden tank is a unique biotope with special considerations. Let's talk sand first. We used Ocean's Direct Sand from Carib Sea, and we did a much deeper sand bend than usual, up to two inches in the rear of the tank. First off, Ocean's Direct Sand will help to immediately cycle the tank and will help create a more diverse biotope. And in case you have any doubts, Ryan's Biome Series proved that out. Secondly, the slightly smaller grain size will help hold the rooted macroalgae in place. It's important to think about where you want your mangroves and macroalgae to go ahead of time. That way you provide a deep enough sand bed in those locations for those rooted plants and algae. I used about 15 pounds of the original grade Ocean's Direct sand with a two inch sand bed in the rear of the tank and a one inch in the front. It's really important that you only open the bag of sand when you're ready to use it and do not rinse this sand. Onto the scape, I used Carib Sea Life Rock. I'd recommend picking up the Nano Kit as it's probably twice as much as you're gonna need. Aquascaping for a Caribbean garden tank is way different than any other sort of reef tank. The vertical space in this build will be taken up by the gorgonians and macroalgaes, not by the rock work itself. And since this IM 14 gallon peninsula only has 12 inches of water depth, you'll wanna keep your aquascape as low down as possible. That being said, it is still important to have adequate rock work in order to attach your gorgonians onto. I used one piece of base rock and one small arch, and that was it. I used a bowl to help disperse the water, and I filled it with a fresh batch of Tropic Marin Pro Reef Salt with a 1.026 specific gravity. I added the water clarifier pouch and then moved on to the livestock. First off, a huge thanks to Algae Barn for providing the mangroves, the copepods, the phytoplankton, and a lot of the macroalgae. This is my first time with mangroves, and Algae Barn was super patient with me and answered all of my questions. Algae Barn sent us red mangroves, also known as Rhizophora mangle, which are one of three species native to Florida. They are relatively easy to care for when provided with strong light, but more on that to come shortly. I buried just the tips of the mangroves in the rear right corner of the tank, and then I used the Neat Aquatics screen top feeding portal to thread them through. Some of the fish are jumpers, so it's absolutely crucial that you use the mesh screen that comes with the IM14 kit. You don't need to bury the roots entirely, just bury them enough to secure them to the sand bed. The red mangroves root structures not only look really cool, but they provide a natural habitat for the livestock. I'm gonna let you in on what may be the best kept secret in the hobby. Seahorse Savvy sells way more than just seahorses. Like seriously, way more. Everything they sell is seahorse safe, and don't get me wrong, they breed and sell some beautiful seahorses. I know this personally because last year I actually set up a seahorse macroalgae tank in the studio and it was a gorgeous tank. Seahorse Savvy has the largest selection of macroalgaes and gorgonians, at least that I've seen, and they all come from either the Gulf Coast or the Caribbean. On top of all of that, they sell an incredible variety of unique fish and inverts that I haven't seen sold anywhere else. And one more thing to note, the owner, Alyssa, just won the 2022 Masna Aquarist of the Year. So yeah, she's the real deal. Here's everything Alyssa sent me. And by the way, it was way more than I could use. So I had to stash some of it in my other tanks. Three saltwater acclimated green mollies, rooted mermaid fan macros, 
rooted shaving brush macroalgae, rooted pine cone macros, rooted and non-rooted halamita, red and yellow non-photosynthetic gorgonians, purple lace gorgonians, coralline encrusted serith snails, scarlet hermit crabs, polka dot hermit crabs, blue and banded porcelain crabs, ruby red crabs, pink footed and yellow sea cucumbers, corky sea finger gorgonians, purple frilly gorgonians, orange spiny gorgonians, three gulf pipefish, red encrusting ball sponges, three flame scallops, gold spot goby, and an ORA gold line goby. Okay, I didn't videotape all of this because I was super engrossed in the aquascaping itself, but here's how I did it. First off, I temperature acclimated all the seahorse savvy stuff in my water box frag tank for 45 minutes. Then I pulled out all of my buckets, both big and small, and I sorted my gorgonians and macroalgaes by color and size. Gorgonians don't always play nice together, so it's important to keep the different species separate from each other. I started out with what I thought would be the centerpiece pieces, centerpiece pieces first. The red mangroves in the back right, the yellow and red finger gorgonians in the center. Then I added some tall rooted halamita and rooted pine cone macro, as well as a purple bottle brush to the rear left. The rooted macros are easy to place as you just have to push them into the substrate. Some of the gorgonians, like the purple bottle brush, come with a ceramic plug. I use bone cutters to remove the lower portion of the plug and bury the remaining portion in the sand. For the red and yellow finger gorgonians, I use the tried and true super glue, epoxy super glue method to attach it to the rock. From here, I chose the orange spiny gorgonian and the purple lace gorgonian and spread them out so they weren't touching each other. Then I filled the left side with some red spike sphere grossularia from Algae Barn, as well as rooted mermaid, shaving brush, and an encrusting ball sponge from Seahorse Savvy. I filled in the right side with a rooted mermaid, encrusting ball sponge with symbiotic zoas, shaving brush, non-rooted halamita, and a quirky sea finger gorgonian. Now that I had all of the gorgonians and mangroves in place, it was time to add the copepods. Adding copepods early on will help your tank avoid the ugly stage because copepods eat a ton of diatoms. For this, I used two bottles of Algae Barnes Galaxy Pods. I turned the pump off beforehand and gave the copepods about 30 minutes to settle in before turning the pump back on. Then I put the three flame scallops in the front left, but they'll move around until they're happy. I turned the lights off and then added the three mollies, the three pipefish, the gold spot goby, and the gold line goby. Then I placed the three cucumbers on the rockwork near the front of the space where there's a lot of flow for them to capture food and also just a great viewing location for me. For the cleanup crew, we have the mollies themselves, which will peck at the algae, the scarlet and polka dot hermits, ruby red crabs, and Sarah snails, which are all great scavengers, and then we added the porcelain crabs, which will help keep the water column clear and are super cool to watch. It's really important to run activated carbon on this Caribbean garden tank at all times. In fact, I'd recommend changing it out daily for the first few days and then once a week during your water changes. I added a bag of marine pier biospheres to the rear filtration chamber that had been sitting in my water box frag tank sump for a few months. It's absolutely crucial that I did this because it will immediately cycle the tank, which is really important when you're adding this much livestock all at once. In fact, I tested the ammonia levels after three days with my brand new HANA ammonia checker, and it was a whopping 0.03 parts per million. I didn't add GFO or granular ferric oxide on day one, but by day three, my phosphate levels had spiked to 0.27, so I did add a small baggie. You will also likely need GFO at some point due to the heavy feeding the livestock will require. Then I added a Reef Breeders Prism auto top-off unit and connected it to a bucket which is hiding in the footrest. The primary light for the tank is the Aqua Illumination Prime 16 HD with the 12 inch flex arm. The mangrove light is the Ecotech Radeon XR15 Freshwater with the premium hanging kit. Why two lights? Because the mangroves are tall and require intense lighting, while the macroalgae and photosynthetic gorgonians require much lower light. 
Using my PAR meter, I adjusted the lights to get 25 to 65 PAR in the tank itself and a much more intense light for the mangroves at 600 PAR. The Caribbean Garden is not a tank for a ton of blue light as the macro algaes require a much lower Kelvin. Here are the settings for the AI Prime. Lights on at 7 a.m., ramp to full intensity at 11 a.m., which is 6,000 Kelvin at 28%, which uses only 8 watts of total power output. Keep that intensity until 4 p.m. and then a slow ramp down to lights off at 8 p.m. For the XR15 freshwater light, I use the planted sunrise preset with a max intensity of 25%. Sunrise at 8 a.m. and sunset at 6.40 p.m. I'm using the Inkbird temperature controller set to 78 degrees with a variance of plus or minus 0.5 degrees. I picked up a Wi-Fi power outlet from Amazon, which is super handy when doing your water changes and feeding your tank. And lastly, I highly recommend adding a VCA random flow generator nozzle. I believe it's the three quarter inch size to replace the flared nozzle the IM14 comes with. Gorgonians need a ton of flow, and when you turn the Mighty Jet return pump up to 1.2, the random flow generator will pelt out a huge amount of current throughout the entire tank. We have a lot of tips for long-term care. First off, get a piece of 1 8 inch clear netting and cut out a small rectangle and place it over the weir cutouts in the rear filtration chamber. Over the first few days, I had to remove the filter sock and dump out three pipefish because they were small enough to get through those cutouts. Next up, test for nitrates and phosphates every two to three days for the first few weeks. The nitrate, but especially the phosphate, will likely spike quickly during the initial few weeks due to the heavy feeding. Add a small amount of GFO as needed to keep your phosphates in a range somewhere between 0.05 and 0.1 parts per million. Be sure to always run activated carbon in this tank and change it out once a week during your water changes because it will make both the Gorgonians and the sponges a lot happier. I know it's super tempting and I get lazy sometimes too, but don't skip your weekly water changes for this Caribbean garden tank. Yes, it does have a lot of filter feeders and macro algae which will help take up those nutrients, but your Gorgonians will just do a lot better with a weekly 10 to 20% water change. This tank has a wide variety of inhabitants that will require some diverse feeding. Firstly, the fish, especially the gobies and the pipefish, have really small mouths and thus will require really small food. I'm feeding a mix of small size pellets from TDO Chroma Boost, chopped up frozen Hikari Mysis shrimp, chopped up Hikari Spirulina brine shrimp, live fresh baby brine shrimp that I raised at home with the brine shrimp hatchery and BRS premium eggs, as well as freeze-dried Calanus and rotifers. For the NPS finger gorgonians, sponges, scallops, cucumbers, and porcelain crabs, I'm dosing daily with Algae Barnes Ocean Magic Live Phytoplankton and supplementing with some coral food like reef chili. It's easy to see how quickly your nutrients can spike with all this food. Other than that long term, just keep your gorgonians away from each other and trim back your macroalgae as needed. This is hands down the most stunning tank I have ever created. The unusual mix of livestock is just something we don't often see in this hobby. Sometimes the usual mixed reef tank is the perfect build for you, but why not try something out there, something unique that will really impress your friends and family. For another unusual and inspiring build, check out the softy tank we created. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching. Happy reefing, be well. We'll see you next time.